What's the best pickup truck? The Toyota Hilux GR Sport, the Ford Ranger Raptor, or the new Volkswagen Amarok Panamericana. To find out, I'm gonna score them, oh, sorry, in a range of tests to see what they're like for work and for play. And of course, I'm gonna launch them to see how quick they are from naught to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about engines and performance. So the Ford Ranger Raptor has a three litre twin turbo V6 petrol engine that puts out 292 horsepower and 583 newton meters of torque, driving all four wheels via a 10 speed automatic gearbox. The Toyota Hilux has a 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel, which puts out 204 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque, driving all four wheels via a six speed automatic gearbox. And finally, the Volkswagen Amarok has a 3-litre V6 turbo diesel that puts out 240 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque, driving all four wheels via a 10-speed automatic gearbox. Now I'm going to jump into this and we're going to have an uphill drag race. We're going to do a little game of winner stays on. So first up, I'm going to race the Toyota Hilux and whichever one wins will go up against the Ford Ranger Raptor. I'm going in automatic mode for the gearbox, diff lock on and stability off. Let's find out what the Hilux is running. How have you set up your truck, Rory? So I've selected D on the gearbox and I've pressed a button that says power on it. I'm in the high range four wheel drive, so I haven't locked any diffs and I'm just going to brake boost and see what happens. There's a reason he hasn't locked the rear diff and I'll explain why later. What? Come on! What? What? I've got a horrible feeling you won. To be honest, I am really surprised. I think I may have won. No, you absolutely did win. I didn't know what happened with this. It just went like really sluggish up that hill. I'm disappointed. Rory, can we do a best two out of three? You all right with that? Um, yeah, let's do it again. It's only fair. More like it. Now it's going. Ah! Yeah, that was completely different then. It's like it performed as it should do. Yeah, I mean, you've got a bigger engine, more power, more torque. I, you should have won and you did win that time. So uh, that seems fair. But, you know, I was quite proud of the old Gazoo racing. Did pretty well. However, I did say two out of three. It's one each. So we have to do the decider. Three. Oh, hello. No. Do you know what? I thought you were going to do me there, Rory, but thankfully you didn't. Yeah, I was hot off the line, but now you came back and you won that one. Right, let's get the Ranger Raptor. You're back then, Rory, with some added firepower and knobbly off-road tyres. You should definitely win this. I have entered a mode called Baja mode for off-road use only, so I'm hoping I'm going to win, yeah. Ah, all right, whatever. Come on, let's do it. This is really odd, this car. Sometimes it just like, meh, just pulls away like so slow. Once again, best two out of three though, okay? Three, two, one. Better, come on. Oh, it's close this time. I think I won that one. Yeah, I think you did actually. I think what it is with this, you've got to get your brake boost just right. Hold it on for too long and then it loses its boost and then it crawls away like a snail. This is going to be the decider. I've realised in Baho mode, you can't lock the front diff. I might have to choose a different setting, maybe mud and ruts. Let's just try mud and ruts. Be aware that this is your last go. Mm, uh, I'm going to stick with Baha. <laughs> Oh, come on! 
you were right to play it safe there. It was pretty close, but yeah, you've won. Clear win for the Raptor. Now let's compare these pickups prices. So the Toyota Hilux starts from £32,000. Though this particular GR version is £50,000. Then there's a Volkswagen Amarok, which starts from £40,000. And this particular Panamericana is £57,000. And finally, we come to the Ford Ranger, which starts from £33,000, though this Ranger Raptor is £60,000. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these pickups, you might need to sell your current vehicle, and you can do that through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Then they'll come to your house, take the car away, put the money into your account. It's easy. Now, you can do that by clicking on the pop-out banner up there or following the link in the description below. Alternatively, just Google help me car wow and we will help you sell your car. Now let's compare the exterior design of these pickup trucks. So this Hilux has been fettled by Toyota's sporty GR division but you'd never know apart from the odd smattering of GR badges and this fake carbon fibre here it just looks like something an insurgent would drive. It's just missing the 30 cal from the back. Moving on to the Amarok, which I almost called a Touareg because it looks like a Touareg. It's very SUV-like, very posh, almost a bit too posh for off-roading, a bit like me. Ugh, mud. Finally, though, we come to what I think is the best looking of the three, the Ford Ranger Raptor. It's got that perfect balance of ruggedness and looking cool about town. This is definitely the one I would rather be seen in. But then again, I am a car guy. What will someone who's into hardcore off-roading prefer? Now, I've left the pickup trucks out for about half an hour now at this disused quarry to see what we can attract. Oh, I hear something. Oh yeah, what's this? Someone in an old Land Rover Discovery. Oh, here we go. That looks like a Darren. Yeah, he's a proper hardcore off-road expert. He's having a sniff around. Don't want to disturb him. Might startle him and he'll run off. I think he's checking ground clearance. I don't know, he's supposed to be looking at the exterior design, but you know, different strokes for different folks, I guess. Which one do you think he's going to prefer? Yeah. Weird. He's not checking out the decals. He's now tapping it. What's that all about? Oh, he seems to be hugging the Ford Ranger Raptor. It seems like Darren agrees with me. That is the best looking. Now let's compare the interior design of these pickup trucks. I'm going to start off with the Ford Ranger Raptor and to add a little bit of spice to this segment, I'm going to talk you around the interior as the car descends down a slope using its hill descent control. The slower it can go down the slope, the longer I have to tell you about the interior design. Let's do it. Hill descent control engaged. Let's get counted in. Here we go. Three. Right, so the overall design is really nice and the quality of the materials is better than what you'd find in most pickups. I like the sporty steering wheel, the sporty seats, the digital display is really, really good and the infotainment system, easy to use. I like the fact that you've got physical buttons for the key climate control and the digital dials are pretty cool the way they're shaped like cogs. You've got decent storage under here, a couple of cup holders here, some more storage there with a charging back for your phone. The glove box is a decent size. So too are the door bins and there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and the seat height. Ooh, these are electric. I think we're over the finish line now. How long was that? 35.89. God, 35.89. No wonder I was able to waffle on for ages. Now I'm in the Amarok, so let's go. Same thing again. The Amarok actually shares its chassis, many of its parts, with the Ford Ranger Raptor. If you look at the interior design, a lot of the features are the same. It's just been tweaked slightly, so the recess here and the dash is a bit different, the location of the cup holders and the charging pad area. You don't have the lovely paddle shifters for the gearbox like you do in the Raptor. It doesn't feel as sporty, it's a little bit more boring, but the infotainment system's largely the same, though these buttons down here are different, and it seemed to go down that slope a bit quicker that was quicker, wasn't it? 28.7k. Quicker down the hill, and the interior isn't quite so nice. Who'd have thought? You'd think that the VW would have the better interior. I'm glad it hasn't got a VW infotainment system. This is clearly a Ford system because it's actually all right. The VW one's a bit... So that's cheating, including that in this part. I should have done. Finally then, the Toyota. Three, two, one. 
Oh, that took ages to engage. The interior just seems a lot more agricultural and old fashioned compared to the other two. Though I do like the GR elements, like these flashes here and here, sporty steering wheel and the seats, and that, that's it over. Darren, that was quick. That was a wrap, 11.4. Oh my God, it's like it hardly engaged. I'm gonna give it another go, because I've got more to say. Let's see if we can do better next time. Storage under here isn't great. Oh, what's under here? Decent sized glove box. Door bins are narrower than the other two cars. It just doesn't feel quite as luxurious. I mean, look at the materials on there as the other two. It's definitely a win in terms of interior for the Ford, followed by the VW and this last. And once again, Darren, was that even quicker? 11.7. Hmm. Oh well. Now I'm actually gonna do one more run. Reason being, I ran it in high range mode. Now I'm gonna do it in low range mode. It doesn't matter so much with the other two cars because they have like this automatic high range, low range thingy with their gearboxes. This, it will make a difference and we'll find out how much of a difference now. Three, two, one. It's quite handy actually, because there is something else I wanna tell you and that's the infotainment system in this is just so much more old fashioned compared to the other two cars, I mean, look at it. Look at it, look at it. Also, I don't like the way the speakers are just plonked on the top of the dash like that. That was definitely slower then, but still quicker than the other two. Let's find out the exact time. 17.27. Still the quickest down the slope and still the most old fashioned feeling here on the inside. Now I'm gonna compare the back seats of these pickup trucks. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna be driven down a side slope to add a bit of drama. And at the end of testing all three, we'll see which one Darren think performed the best. Off you go, driver. So this chair is actually in my ideal driving position and knee room's okay. Problem is headroom, look, it's fairly tight. Another issue I have is that these grab handles, while useful, this one is fixed, which means that if I get a sudden rock, I could twat my head off there and it's really, really gonna hurt. Another thing to note is that you've got some pockets down here, decent sized door bins. I'm gonna see if the window goes all the way down here in the back and it does, which is good. I do like this feature, look, there we go. We've got a little hook there for, I don't know. Well, you can hang off there. You've got heated, outer seats as well here in the rear and the ice fix anchor points are easy to get to it's okay in the back but i think the major issue is if you're using it for a larger family or for carrying your work colleagues to work trying to fit three in the back is a bit of a squeeze now it's time for the amarok so off you go driver right from the get-go i can tell you that this truck is better for carrying three people in the back at once part of the reason for it is you've got noticeably more headroom, also more shoulder room as well. Knee room is better too, so is foot space. The grab handle does fold away, so you don't end up hitting your head on it like you did in the Toyota. And you've got another grab handle there as well, which is good. But do the back windows go all the way down? They are larger than the Toyota, so you get a better view out. And yes, they go fully down. What I don't have like I have in the Toyota is heated seats here in the back, but I have got, look, three pin socket there, 12 volt pockets there, and you've got some little pockets there for your mobile phone. One thing I'm not so sure about though, is this kind of weird like trim here on the seats there. It's like fake snake skin. Finally then, we come to the Ford Ranger Raptor. So go on driver, let's go for it. So as I've said before, it's based on the same platform as the Amarok. So headroom, knee room, space in the back here is the same. There are a few things that aren't quite so good. You don't have the little extra pockets on the seat backs here, and it's not one touch to make the rear window go all the way down. I have to keep my finger on the button. What is better than the Amarok though, is that we've got two USBs instead of a 12 volt socket, as well as the usual three pin socket that you do have in the Amarok. Another thing I prefer about this, the color scheme and the materials in the back. One thing that is better as well, Eyes fix it easier to get to than in the Amarok, though not quite as easy as in the Hilux. And as with the Amarok, this Raptor has a really annoying like release mechanism for the central armrest, which you don't have in the Hilux. But overall, the Hilux is the worst for carrying people in the back at once. And if I have to choose between this Ranger Raptor and the Amarok, I think this is just a slightly nicer place to be. But which one went down that side slope the best? Let's find out from Darren. Darren! What I want you to do, Darren, is to rank these cars for how well they went down the side slope. Which did it the worst? This. What? 
had the most wheels off the ground. Then the VW, because that had a wheel in the air, but the Hilux had four wheels on the ground at all times. The complete reverse <laughs> to what I thought of the rear passenger space. So when you're buying a pickup, there are compromises to be made for exactly what you want it to be good at. Now let's compare these trucks load carrying capabilities because that matters with a pickup. I'm going to start off with the Hilux. So, oh, put my neck, that tailgate's heavy. These are the low bed dimensions and this is its payload. Moving on to the VW. It's way better. These are its dimensions and the payload. Finally, the Raptor. These are its low bed dimensions and that's the payload. Actually, that's the payload of the normal Ranger. The Raptor, because it's got clever suspension, its payload is actually just this. Now that's important because it falls underneath the magic turn, which you need in order to be able to qualify the vehicle as a commercial vehicle with the inland revenue. As a result, if you go for the Ranger Raptor, you don't get the tax breaks, you can't write off the VAT, and you don't get the special commercial vehicle benefit in kind tax rate either. Thing is though, tax breaks and payload are one thing. No one wants to unexpectedly spill their load because that could be embarrassing. To see how well these trucks can actually carry a precious cargo over rough terrain, I'm gonna drive up this steep slope as smoothly as I can without losing the beach ball that I'm carrying in the load bed. I'm gonna start off with the Raptor and we're gonna see if it's reduced payload, but the fact it's got that clever suspension at the rear actually means that it can keep that beach ball in its load bed. Right, here we go. Smoothly, but surely, because I don't want to slide backwards. So come on, just power up. Not too quick, keep the ball in the back. And it's done the job. So a deep bed, good rear suspension, and a smooth power delivery, plus those knobbly tiles giving me all that grip, meant I didn't spill my load. Now it's time for the Hilux. Will its shallower load bed and rear leaf suspension work against it? Here we go. Steady as she goes, nice and smooth, powering up. Oh, it's... oh no, ball down! Oh, I lost traction and then gripped again and, oh, spilt my load. Finally then, the Amarok. Let's see how it does. Smooth, 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 steady. Hold on to your ball! Whoa! I was just watching it in my rear view mirror almost escape, but it's still there. What did Darren think? So, assessing those vehicles going up that slope, and how they held on to their precious cargo. How do you rank them worst to best? Worst has to be the Toyota. It scrabbled a lot more for grip and you lost your load. Second place was this. Scrabbled a little bit, saved the load, but still not a lot of effort coming up the hill. But the Ford just put no effort in and drove straight up. The ball wasn't really bouncing about much in the Ford either, was it? Because you weren't bouncing the front end to get grip. Ah, tyres? Tyres. What about the rear suspension? Because that Ford has coil springs rather than leaf springs. Leaves are a lot more aggressive than coils. Ah, uh, okay, so that'll be the bouncing as well. Yeah. Right, well, there you go. Now let's compare these pickup trucks' off-road capabilities, starting with their stats. So this Toyota Hilux has a two-wheel drive mode, a four-wheel drive mode, and a low-range four-wheel drive mode. It also has an automatically controlled rear limited slip differential. You've got independent front rear suspension and a rigid axle on the back with leaf springs. In terms of ground clearance, 310 millimeters, and you've got an approach angle of 29 degrees and a departure angle of 26 degrees. The Volkswagen Amarok has a two-wheel drive mode, a four-wheel drive mode, and a four-wheel drive low. It has a selectable rear locking differential. You have independent front suspension, and then a rigid axle with leaf springs at the back. You've got 237 millimeters of ground clearance and an approach angle of 30 degrees. The departure angle is 23 degrees. 
Finally then, we come to the Ford Ranger Raptor. So as with the other pickup trucks, you've got a two-wheel drive mode to the gearbox, four-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive low. You've got a selectable rear differential, but this Ranger Raptor also has a selectable front differential as well. You've got independent suspension at the front and a rigid axle at the back, normally with leaf springs, but this Ranger Raptor has upgraded Fox coilovers. Oh yeah. You've also got 265 millimeters of ground clearance and an approach angle of 32 degrees and a departure angle of 24 degrees. Now let's see what these numbers actually mean in reality by taking these trucks over a rock crawl. Before we set off on the rock crawl, we're gonna set up the cars in the most off-roady settings. So I'm going into four-wheel drive low mode and I can cycle through various settings. So I've got all sorts of stuff like slippery, mud and rut, sand, Baja, and I'm going into rock crawl and I can also lock the rear differential and the front differential if I want to. And I'll be doing that. Let's see what setting the Hilux is in. Nick, what have you set up the Toyota as? I have the Hilux in four wheel drive, low range. I have my rear diff locked and I have it in, <laughs> in power mode. I don't have separate driving modes. I just have eco and power. So I've gone for the obvious choice. And in the Amarok, do you have different like off-road programs like I've got in this Ranger? So I do have different modes. I've got normal, eco, tow haul, slippery, mud and ruts, or deep snow and sand. And I've gone for mud and ruts because it seems the closest to rocks, which I don't have. And obviously your rear diff lock, but you've got no front diff and low range four wheel drive. Okay, let's go and do the rock crawl then. Darren is bending down, taking this very seriously. The beautiful Darren there, just giving directions. And he's saying he's got a little one, just a very little one. Oh, maybe he's talking about ground clearance, not the size of Nick's thingy-majig. Oh, another one. I should be sensible and wait my turn, but I am going to follow on, which could be disastrous. Oh, that's a noise, that's a noise. I literally can't see where I'm going. I think I better wait. Oh! Yeah, I bottomed out there. Sorry, Volkswagen. You know, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Oh, that looks wicked though, going over there. Right, here we go. I'm literally not looking where I'm going. I'm just following Darren's instruction. Uh, heading on. Oh, it's just so smooth and easy to control on the brake and the power. I wouldn't be able to go over this on my own. I'd just be damaging the vehicle. I don't know what that means. Is there a crocodile? Dan's very impressed. I think we'll get Darren's final verdict, but I think it's going to go the way of the Raptor. The noise says it all. <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? It didn't touch once. It's all about suspension travel. Yeah. You've got a lot more movement in suspension travel where the leaf springs, they're restricted a lot. So leaf springs, really good for carrying heavy loads, but not so good for off-roading. Between those two though, which do you think did the best? Amarok. So you think that the Amarok is a better off-roader than the Toyota? Surprisingly, yes. Well, there you go. Now then, let's compare how these pickup trucks drive on the road because that's where you're going to be spending most of your time in them. Can you actually have one of these as a substitute for a normal car such as an SUV? Well I'm going to start off with this Ford Ranger Raptor and the first thing to note is the engine. It goes really good and it sounds nice as well. That's the benefit of having a V6 petrol. The 10-speed automatic gearbox is responsive so when you put your foot down 
it doesn't mess around, which is quite impressive when you consider it's got 10 gears. The handling's decent enough for a pickup truck. I mean, it's no sports car, but the steering puts it pretty much where you want it to go. And it doesn't lean too much in the bends. Though if you get a bit too carried away, it will start to push on. It doesn't feel quite as good at road holding as a normal SUV. One thing that I am impressed with though is the suspension. Normally in a pickup truck, it's really jiggly and uncomfortable. This one doesn't fidget much at all. I think it's to do with the fact that it's got coil spring rear suspension rather than leaf springs. And it's got adaptive dampers, which I'm leaving in comfort mode because if I put it into the sports mode, it does then feel a bit too firm. Really impressed though with how this drives. I could easily live with it every day, especially as it's actually quite quiet when you're on the motorway, apart from a bit of wind flutter up there it's also relatively maneuverable so the turning circles under 13 meters i'm going to try and do u-turn right now can it make it round yeah. it does help that the steering's quite nice and light i'm very impressed with this in fact i like it so much i wouldn't actually mind one now I've jumped into the VW Amarok and it should feel pretty similar to that Ford Ranger Raptor to drive because after all, underneath the skin, they both share the same chassis. However, this has the cruder leaf spring rear suspension and you do notice it. It just seems a little bit less composed than the Ford and so less car-like. In terms of the noise levels, very, very similar got the same whistling sound from the big door mirrors, but the rest of it is generally quite quiet when you're cruising. However, when you're accelerating this, because it's a diesel, it just doesn't sound as good. And then at the top end, the rev range, which actually isn't that high, about four and a half thousand RPM, it starts to go meh before the gearbox changes up. Also, it doesn't feel quite as responsive. Whoop. Oh dear, uh, it got into a panic there. Thought I was gonna crash into the car in front. That's our filming car, so I didn't surprise him. However, what has surprised me is just how much better the Ford feels to go around corners. It really does feel a bit more responsive to the steering. That must just be that rear suspension yet again. Another thing that I find quite interesting is I thought that this would just be a slightly more relaxing drive than the Ford, a bit quieter, but it's not. It's not any more comfortable in any way, shape or form. So for all those people that go, well, I want a luxurious pickup, I'm gonna go for the VW. I don't think it's the one to have in that respect. Anyway, turning circle, because it's the same chassis as the Ford, it's pretty much exactly the same, under 13 meters. So U-turns are just as easy. And the steering feels just as light. Oh, you notice that? When you're pulling away, there's a bit more delay from this engine while you wait for the turbocharger to spool up. Never thought I'd say this, but I think I'd rather have a petrol powered pickup than a diesel one. Anyhow, one last pickup to try. Toyota. The GR badge on this Toyota Hilux isn't just for show. GR has actually worked on this vehicle. They've given it some rated sportier suspension, which is supposed to improve how it drives on the road. Now, all I can do right now is compare it to the other two pickups, and I have to say it feels more agricultural. The suspension itself is just a little bit more bouncy. The vehicle fidgets more over imperfections in the road. It is, quite simply, just less comfortable to drive. Does it have better handling, though, because of the sportier suspension setup than a normal Hilux? Well, that truck isn't known for its handling prowess, and maybe it's a bit better, but once again, comparing it to the last two pickup trucks I've just driven, this is the worst when it comes to going around a corner. It's also the worst when it comes to noise from the engine. Listen. Oh, sounds so rough. A bit like it's running on gravel. It is quite punchy, though. It's not bad at all, though the gearbox isn't quite as responsive as in the Ford nor the VW. I like a little bit less the noise you get, both from wind and the road. It's just noisier inside than the other two. Also, the controls just don't feel as precise. I mean, look at that. Now, I own a vehicle with the GR badge on, and if I did that in my GR Yaris, I'd be absolutely bouncing off the hedges either side of the road. This, not much is happening. And that brings me on to the turning circle. It's 13.4 meters, so quite a little bit more than the other two pickups, but it can still make it round here. Just a little bit more difficult, without a doubt. 
this is the one I'd least like to daily drive. However, I have driven another SUV from Toyota, which has been fettled by GR, which I'd much rather drive on a daily basis. Find out what that is, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Let's see how quick each of these pickup trucks accelerate. Time to launch them. This Hilux is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 10.7 seconds. Let's do it, let's find out the reality. Yes, 10.71, pang on the number, the Toyota says. Perfect. Now for the Amarok, and um, Volkswagen says this truck should do 0 to 60 in nine seconds. Let's find out the reality. A bit of a slow takeoff, but we're going now. It feels weird. It's like it didn't launch properly. Let's try it just not brake boosting. It's a bit better. 8.96 seconds. It's a bit quicker than they said by the tiniest margin. Yeah, it doesn't like you to put your foot on the brake and the accelerator at the same time. It like kills the power. Now for the Ranger Raptor. Ford says this Ranger Raptor should do 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. Let's do it. That hooked up. Come on. Ah, 8.01, a little bit slower than they said. But we can give it another go. Let's turn the stability off. Come on. Nah. Yes! 7.7! .7. What? What happened there? It just I wasn't expecting that. From out of nowhere, it did a 7.7. .7. Now, if you want to see how these trucks compare over the quarter mile, then a drag race with them. Click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link in the description below to go watch that. That surprised me. So the Ford wins this group test. It won nine of the 12 challenges we put it through and ultimately deserves to take first place. The VW came second or the Hilux was last. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know which is your favorite of these three pickups in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss our next upload.